Hello, welcome back to the Calyx Growing Things Food Garden and I'm Thelma. I'm standing next to one of our lovely recently shooted banana. But today we're going to be introducing the demonstration where we grew sweet pepper and cabbage in the same bed. <music> I don't know about you, but cabbage is not my favorite crop to go in the garden because the slugs and snails just make a meal of it almost every night. But it's a journey that we want to share with you and show you the experience we have this time growing cabbage along with sweet pepper. The bed was previously prepared as usual with our treatment of compost. The seedlings were prepared in the nursery and here we are inserting the cabbage seedling at a spacing of approximately 50 centimeters. Likewise, the sweet pepper was done before and in between them we have the chives approximately 30 centimeters between the chive seedlings. After planting as usual, you water, water them well so that the seedlings do not go into shock. Over the last 10 days, most of the crops did very well. No usual problem here with slugs. You could see some damage on this one. Slugs love cabbage, as most of you who tried it would know. There are two others down there that are, have been chewed upon slightly. But in general, everything else looks fine. We're going to take our chances with the slugs. What I do is every night come out and look for them. And those that I see, I physically remove. The, what we are going to do in our 10 days is to apply a top dressing of the compost. Very nice, friable compost produced here in a composting corner. And this should supply sufficient nutrients to the crop for the next two to three weeks. We'll, of course, observe closely and if we see any sign of nutrient deficiency, we will top up with some compost tea. Here we are 17 days after transplanting. A few things have happened. The plants have grown sufficiently well that we have installed Florida weed method of support for the sweet pepper. There are holes in the leaves which suggest that there are chewing insects about. The, we also had an issue with the cutworm. We lost one cabbage plant and in that space we are going to be supplying that space with um, some scallion seedlings. The cabbage, both the cabbage and the sweet pepper, the nutrient status is fine, they're nice and green and healthy. We've tried several things with the slugs. We have caught a few, but deterrents such as cornmeal and um, coffee grains didn't seem to do the trick. So we have decided we are going to have to apply metaldehyde pellets. We will alternate neem and Bt for the other insect problems. Here we are at the third update. The plants continue to grow fairly well, but I have one new development to report. We experience an intense six-day period of rainfall resulting from the approach of Hurricane Elsa and the inevitable happened. When your plants are sitting with wet soil around the stem, you are likely to get root rot. The controls for, the chemical controls for root rot, but in our case, and given the time, we just remove the plants and replace them with celery and tatsoi. We've taken this demonstration now to eight weeks and it's time to harvest. The tatsoi are wonderful. It's time to harvest some things. The sweet pepper. This would be the first fruit we are going to pick from the sweet pepper. Tatsoi is already, but the cabbages are not. Cabbage will take another three or so weeks before they complete the folding. The folding is far advanced and that's another three weeks or so before it's ready. 
But today we're going to show you the reaping of the sweet pepper and the tatsoi and just give a general summary of the things that we did in order to get the bed to this stage, which I consider an eventful crop, but still a successful crop. So hold on, we're going to get the knife, time to harvest. You know, this tatsoi, the size of it is the largest one we've had. It's a, the size of a, a cabbage almost. Wonderful. So I was going to cut two, but I think this one I'll leave for next week's cutting. And while I'm standing at this cabbage, what part of the maintenance that we carry out from time to time is to remove, ah, interestingly, hmm, you see what happens under the lower leaves? These are cutworms. I've been searching the front ones and not the back ones, and here are the little pests that give me all those trouble. Interesting. All right, so teaching lesson. Search all the old leaves, remove them, especially if they're yellow. They have no further use to your crop, so you can remove them. All right, so the lower peppers, once they're firm, ni nice dark green color and firm, ready for harvesting. And if I looked at the plants, the six, seven plants we have, six plants, I would think we can get about 12 peppers today. So no need to show me reaping all of them, but this, these are medium sized peppers. Good size for home production, actually excellent size. This is the standard size. Sometimes I get much larger ones, but there's no need, don't need any larger peppers than these. Okay, lovely. Uh -huh. Back to my friend, the cutworm. These are larvae. They feed at night on young plants. They can do a lot of damage, severing seedlings at the base, at the soil line. But the thing about cutworms, they rest during the day, all curled up just below the soil surface. So if you're looking for them in the day, you have to look very carefully and be prepared to stir the soil a bit. The adult cutworms are grey-brown moths, and you see them flying around in the day, and you think they're not going to be doing much harm, but their larvae are the ones that destroy the crop. For our purpose, we get adequate control of the cutworm if we apply neem oil at the right time. So although the harvest has started, uh, this bed is eight weeks old, we have another two or three weeks before we stop the maintenance activities. Maintenance, especially since we have problems with cutworms and the slugs and snails, it's a continuous thing. So just to demonstrate, part of the maintenance activity required now for the cabbage is to search the lower leaves, and in fact, we're going to remove those leaves that are no longer contributing to the overall production of the cabbage, those that are low and under which the slugs and snails do hide. I've been removing any leaves that were lying on the ground, but since we see, we, oh yes, we're having an outbreak of cutworms, so it is now wise, and I will be spraying today. Continuous monitoring here are some that are definitely showing some symptoms look and they are they do hide on them there's nothing here we also look to see if there are any slugs or snails snails in particular no snails under there but certainly the cutworms All right, never a dull moment. Well, we're going to end this demonstration at this particular point in time. The crops are well on their way, and it has been an interesting journey. We, from the beginning, we were on the alert for any white flies or caterpillar damage, especially with the sweet potato right next to it that had some evidence of um, white flies. So in, we applied two applications of neem oil, one at three weeks and the other at four weeks. Thereafter, we did apply some BT, again, two applications, 
one beginning at um, four weeks and followed up about a week later. Um, acceptable control. You could see it's not easy growing cabbages without a lot of holes in them. And we are staying away from the harsh chemicals that would offer better put up, put protection, but definitely not um, the ideal products to use in a home garden. And just to recap, in looking how we utilize this space, if you recall, I think it was at week three or week four, we lost the first cabbage um, that was due to cutworms. And thereafter, we had about a two week period that was Hurricane Elsa, a really wet period. And we lost three cabbage to root rot. And we showed those to you um, in pre earlier on in the video. But what um, I just want to emphasize now in wrapping up is that when you have occurrences such as that, the thing to do is to always try to have something on hand that you can come back in and quickly utilize that, that space. And in this case, we had um, celery, which are doing well, and the parsley. And both celery and parsley are sometimes used as pests to deter, keep away some pests, whether it does or not. I like celery and parsley, so they're doing wonderfully. We also did put in some lettuce. Those are ready to reap now. The chives were in from the beginning. They're now flowering, and that's another part of what makes a small garden very interesting when you can have the aesthetics and the functionality at the same time. The chives are another member of the onion family, including the scallions in that first gap. They're also known to deter some pests. And in terms of the nutrition, as you know, we are heavily dependent on compost and compost tea. Everything was planted, the bed was augmented with compost. And at three weeks, I think, or two weeks, we did the first top dress of the compost on the surface. And we followed that with a repeat compost application at about five weeks. All of that worked except for one or two sweet pepper plants. There's one at the end that is showing some serious nutritional deficiencies. But at this stage, in order to get the sweet pepper uh, bearing for as long as possible, we're going to do a supplemental application of uh, what they, is referred to as a bloom booster. And the one available to us now is the 71240. And that's just to keep the sweet pepper going. But everything else has enough um, nutrition. You can see that they're nice and growing healthily. So interesting experience. It's one that I learned from quite a bit. And I think hopefully you do. And if you like the video, please let us know in the comment section. And as usual, if you haven't subscribed as yet, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and check out the Calyx books on Amazon and Book Fusion. Crop production, I've been focusing a lot on producing vegetable crops, and that book is a very comprehensive text that will take you through the life cycle of most of these plants, the pests, and what to do about them. So until the next video, this is Thelma saying bye-bye.